Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to add total rows to your dynamic array formulas. So here's an example here where I have a total row at the bottom calculating the total of this column. And if we're to make a change to this filter to re-spill this range, we can see the total row is still included in the spill range and it moves down and recalculates that total. Now we can also use this technique for multiple total rows. So here I have a few total rows and I'm calculating different results here. We can really put whatever we want at the bottom of the spill range. And we can even use this for a total row and a total column or add additional columns to the right of our spill range. So this technique is a bit of a workaround. However, it does not use any macros or VBA code. It just uses a few dynamic array formulas and some conditional formatting. So let's take a look at how to set it up. So the first step is to write our dynamic array formulas. And I have those in a hidden uh, grouped column section here. And I should note that I'll make this file available for free download and put a link to that in the description below this video so you can follow along. And you will want to be uh, familiar with dynamic array formulas. I have a separate video that explains them in more detail. I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Also make sure you're on a version of Excel that has dynamic array formulas. So there's really four components here that we need for this setup. Uh, first of all, we need a formula with a spill range. So in this example, I'm using the filter function here to create this spill range. And filter is just going to filter this data set over here for a specific criteria, which in this case is where the customer name equals the customer name, the value of the customer name in cell M3. And that's a drop down, so we can select a different customer name. And when we do that, the formula recalculates and spills either to more or less rows. So that's the first step. And of course, you can have different types of spill ranges. In that second example I showed, I was using a sum ifs function to create the spill range. So any spill range will work for this. The second component is the total row. And I have that right here. And we're putting that at the top of the spill range initially because we can't put it at the bottom since the number of rows in our spill range will likely change. So we have the total row at the top. And I've just typed the word total in this cell. You can put any phrase you'd like in here. It does not need to be the word total. And then we also need to do calculations for our total row. And I've done that in this cell right here. This is just using the sum function and to create the reference to all the cells in this particular column in our spill range, I'm using this index function here and using the spill range operator to reference the entire spill range. And then we're just specifying a column number. Now I've made this dynamic with the column functions, but if we were to hit F9 on the keyboard here, we can see this evaluates to a four. So really we're just creating a reference to the fourth column in our spill range and summing that up. That's what this formula does there. I'll hit escape to uh, not save that change. So that's the second component, our total row. And of course we can have multiple cells that contain uh, calculations there. The third component is the order of these rows. And I'm using this column index here. I call it a column index, but essentially we have two formulas here. The first formula is just using the sequence function and uh, returning a count of the number of rows in our spill range using the rows function. So that'll return the number of rows and sequence will create or spill out a sequence of numbers. And that's what we have here in the spill range. So that's our numbers, row numbers. And then up here, I just have a very simple formula that counts the number of rows in the spill range and adds one to it. So that will be always one greater than the number of rows in our spill range. When we sort this, that'll put our total row at the bottom. And then so finally, the fourth component, and this is definitely the most interesting one here, is the sort by function. So here, uh, we're using this very interesting reference here, which references the spill range out to a cell above the spill range. And this actually works. And what it does is within this array, it includes all of these cells up here. It can be above or it can even be above and to the left of the spill range. So essentially this array right here is including all these rows, I'm sorry, all the cells from G5 all the way down to J16. That's what we have there 
for the array. And then the uh, by array is what we're sorting by, the column we're sorting by. And again, here we're starting at F6, which is this sequence function, and we're going up to F5. So including all those cells in our by array, and then the sort order is going to be a one there for ascending order. So that is the sort by function there. And uh, when we hit enter and that spills out, that puts our total row down here at the bottom because again, that index number right there is going to be one greater than the number of rows. So that's the initial setup there and those four components for our formulas. Now we'll take a look at the formatting. So the second step is to format our total row with conditional formatting. And I've removed that conditional formatting so we can reapply it here. As you'll see, without it, the total row doesn't really stand out. We also have some zeros here where there are blank cells uh, here in our total row. And so we wanna clean all this up and we can do that with some conditional formatting. So the first thing I'm going to do is just select, uh, starting from the first cell in my spill range all the way over to the right, and then we'll just go down a specific, or a certain number of rows, however many rows you could potentially spill out to. Uh, there's no way to make this dynamic yet with conditional formatting, so we'll just go down to here, uh, and you can include more rows if you need it. So we'll select those cells, then we're going to go to the Home tab, and go to conditional formatting, and we're going to select new rule. And from the new formatting rule window, we're going to choose use a formula to determine which cells to format. And the formula, we'll type it right here in this box, is very simple. We're going to type an equal sign, and then we're going to select the cell in the top left corner of the selection here. So that cell right there, L6. And we need to change the referencing here from uh, absolute to mixed referencing. So I'm gonna hit F4 on the keyboard twice. That's going to make the column letter absolute, but the row number is relative. So as this formatting is applied down, in every single row, it'll evaluate against the value in column L, but this row number actually changes. And we're going to set that equal to the word total. So I'm gonna just gonna put uh, in quotation marks here, the word total, or again, whatever phrase you used in the left cell of your total row. So this could be different here. It doesn't have to be total. But what this is doing is it's going to apply a format wherever this formula is true. So again, it's going to apply to every single row here and wherever uh, column L and whatever that row number is equals total, then we're going to apply a format. And for that format, the first thing we can do is for the number formatting, we are using an accounting style format with no decimal places. However, we also want to uh, change this zero to just show a blank instead. With the accounting style, we would show a dash, which might be okay. But if you want to show a blank, what we can do is go to the custom tab here, and this is the accounting style format. And then after this uh, second semicolon here, we can just select all of that. And instead of uh, that, that would be what's in place of a zero, we're just going to put uh, two quotation marks. So that'll give us a blank cell if there is a zero in that total row. So, uh, oh, and we also wanna change the font. We'll use a bold font. For the border, you can have a border at the top of the total row. You can also put one at the bottom. You could change the colors of these borders as well. And then for the fill color, we'll just choose this light green fill color. We'll go ahead and hit OK. We'll hit OK here, and we can see now our total row has been formatted. And again, as we make a selection here from the dropdown and the spill range changes, that total row is going to be at the bottom, of course, and the conditional formatting is going to apply that formatting to any row that contains the word total on the left-hand side. So if there was for some reason the word total up here uh, within your data, then you'd wanna change the name or the phrase here in your total row, so it only applies to the total row. So that's the basic setup there. Maybe not the easiest thing in the world to implement, but this technique does give us a lot of possibilities. Uh, hopefully Microsoft will give us a better solution someday. And I did wanna leave you with a few final notes. Uh, first of all, you can have all of your data on separate sheets. I have my source data, my staging or calculation area, and then the final report all on one sheet to make this easier easier to explain, but you can put all this data on separate sheets and it'll still work. Uh, at the beginning, I showed a solution with multiple total rows. 
This is made possible by just putting those total rows at the top. So I have additional total rows at the top here, one for an average calculation, a count calculation, and then I have uh, the column index numbers just uh, in the right order so those will move to the bottom once we use the sort by function. So that's what's happening over here. Those are sorted to the bottom. And then I have conditional formatting, a different conditional formatting rule applied to these uh, to make them a different color to each row. You can even apply conditional formatting to each column within your total rows. And then finally, we also have a total column in this example here. This one's a slightly more complex in that we have one additional staging area. So here's our initial staging area where we have the total row at the top. You can see I'm also doing the total column calculation over here on the left side uh, of the uh, spill range. And then we have an initial sort by function here that's going to uh, sort by and put our total row at the bottom here. And then we have uh, up here at the top, we have this row index, which will resort our column order. Uh, and so we're using another sort by function here uh, to just sort based on this row, the numbers in this row. And again, that total column that's on the left side has the greatest number there. So that our that will put our total column out to the right. And then we have conditional formatting that's applied to both the total column and the total row. So uh, I hope this is helpful. Of course, you can download this file and check it out and leave a comment below this video with any questions or suggestions. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.